ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات عليه وسلم عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا حق تقاته حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارهام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان استقى الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلوات عليه والسلام عليه واشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار brothers and sisters in al islam one of the most heinous and gravest crimes in islam after associating partners with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the act of murder our beloved prophet muhammad ibn abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith narrated by the two imams imam bukhari and imam muslim he said beware of the seven gravest sins and it was said o oh, messenger of allah what are they and he said associating partners with allah magic and the killing of the soul whom allah has declared prohibited without a just case unfortunately brothers and sisters in al islam today we find amongst the ranks of the muslims a small group of muslims young in age men and women who have taken the path of the khawarij and shaitan has made it seem fair to them to commit the abhorrent crime of murder and claim erroneously and falsely that this is jihad fi sabilillah and with great sadness and shame i have to say that these brothers and sisters these young men and women are not from those people who detest the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and feel that the sunnah is outdated neither are those they are from those people who see the, the sharia allah's divine law as being something outmoded old with no connection with contemporary life but rather these are young men and women who are from those who worship Allah and claim to be steadfast in following the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they are the people who bear the hallmark of religion and piety and so it leads us to question and to ask those people who seek to become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these people who try to practice Islam how do they fall into the trap of shaitan and become oblivious of the teachings of Islam that prohibit the killing of innocent souls may they be muslim or non muslim so many people have their own take they have their own reason for this some people say their actions are a reaction to the racism and discrimination that is prevalent in our society however 
we have to ask ourselves this question. There are other groups in our society, for example, the black community, who have faced over 400 years, almost half a millennium, of the worst form of chattel slavery and racial discrimination. However, these people have never ever strapped bombs to themselves and tried to kill innocent people. Some people reason and they claim that this is a reaction to the political and social problems they see facing the Muslims around the world and thus they engage in this indiscriminate killing. However, they're trying to raise the status of the Muslim Ummah can only be as that great Imam of the Sunnah Malik ibn Anas said only that which was effective for the first of this community will be effective for the last of it and the glory of Islam lies in its call to Tawheed and this is what our beloved messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah started and ended his call with never ever ever did he begin with wanton murder and bloodshed and so if none of these reasons are sufficient to, under, to explain their actions, then what is the reason? Some people say that unfortunately, these young men and women, our brothers and sisters, have fallen into and have followed a twisted and deviated ideology. The ideology of the Khawarij. An ideology that is foreign to the practice and understanding of our righteous and noble predecessors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them. And this ideology is foreign to the practice and understanding of Islam that is found here in the UK and the Muslim institutions here in the UK. And this leads us to ask, if this is the case that these young people have fallen into this ideology, how did this ideology reach them? How did they come to learn and to fall into this ideology? Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is no secret to none of us that unfortunately, if you turn to the internet, if you look at many of the bookshops, you'll find there are websites, publications, even individuals in our society called into this dangerous and heretical belief. And these individuals, through many means, through their websites, through their books, and through their lectures, call our young brothers and sisters to this ideology, and promote and make beloved to them this ideology. And so, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and yourselves, that this change in the thinking and the Islamic practice of these young men and women doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't take place in one day but goes through a three-stage process. Stage number one, a takfir. Stage number two, a tanfir. And stage number three, a tafjir. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم والصائر المسلم من كل ذم إنه هو غفور رحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على ذاك النبي الكريم نبينا وحبيبنا محمد ابن عبد الله سيد الولد آدم أجمعين وبعد and so we identified that the change in his young brothers and sisters doesn't happen overnight but goes through a three pronged three-pronged stage development. The first stage being a taqfir. Taqfir means to declare somebody a disbeliever or an apostate. And so these callers to the doors of the hellfire of the Prophet ﷺ describe them. They begin to instill in the hearts and to distill in the hearts of the young, our young men and women the idea that the scholars and the rulers of the Muslims all of them without exception, without looking into their special circumstances or their cases, are apostates and disbelievers. And so once they have achieved this, and placed into their hearts the idea that both the scholars and the rulers are disbelievers, they move on to a very important stage which is tanfir. 
Tanfir is to make somebody flee or to go away from somebody or something. And Tanfir here we mean by covering the hearts of the young Muslim, male or female, with the idea that the scholars, the legitimate scholars of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah should not be listened to. They place into their hearts that that scholars like Al Imam Abdul Aziz bin Baz and the Imam Muhammad Nasruddin Al Albani and the Imam Muhammad ibn Salih Al Uthaymin, may Allah be pleased with them all, should not be trusted. How do they do this? Is it something a straightforward and open process? No. They use names and they use terms. For example, they say that they do not know anything about the current affairs. As one Jamaican ideologue said, that the scholars, and here this individual meant Sheikh Albani, Sheikh Bin Baz, and Sheikh Uthaymeen, that these scholars are scholars for dollars. That they give fatwa for money, and we seek refuge in Allah from such lies. And so, they place the seeds of mistrust and enmity in the hearts of the young Muslim and Muslimah. And so they do not trust these scholars. And neither do they turn to these scholars, but rather they turn to their own scholars. Somebody who is not qualified to give fatwa. Somebody who is not qualified to talk about Islam. Somebody whose specialism could be medicine, or engineering, or mechanics. Or maybe he has no secondary school certificate at all. But he automatically overnight, through reading many books and knowing the Arabic language, becomes a scholar. The last of this stage, and the most dangerous of these stages, is when that person, after believing that the scholars and all the rulers without exception are apostates, then believing there's no scholar to trust, that all the scholars can't be trusted and we seek refuge in love from such claims. Their hearts and their minds and their souls are prepared to follow the orders of these so-called scholars, of these so-called hidden imams, of these organizations that follow the ideology of the Khawarij. And so these young brothers and sisters, they, they believe that by killing, killing innocent people, they are oblivious to the teachings, the pristine teachings of Islam that they believe by killing innocent people whether they be Muslim, non-Muslim that they are uh, engaging in the acts of jihad and in fact it should be called fasad, corruption and that by doing such evil deeds that shaitan has made fear seem into them that they will enter the highest levels of paradise and little do they know that the actions they carry out are not those of the people who are the awliya of our Rahman, but rather these actions are from the awliya of our shaitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve the houses of all the Muslims and to preserve our young children, because our young children, our young men and women, whether they be toddlers or whether they be teenagers, they are the future of Islam in this world and they are the future of Islam in this country. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and to guide us. Waqeem as-salam.